I passed angry about, oh, when did I read the news? About a second after I read the news. I'm using my crappy gaming headset with a crappy busted microphone and I don't care. I need to keep my hands free because I'm angry and I'm fidgety. And I'm playing you this game footage I would already recorded of um, Beta 1.73, but I'm not commentating on it. I'm not even looking at it. I'm just making this uh, audio. I just saw on my Facebook feed a rumor is being spread in the um, tech industry out of Wall Street Journal. Wall Street Journal seems to have gotten a, it's a reliable unnamed source. Somebody high up in Mojang has leaked, apparently without anybody's permission, the news that Microsoft and Mojang are finalizing a deal that Microsoft is going to buy Mojang, the creators of Minecraft, for two billion dollars. Now Marcus Pearson, person, however you pronounce it, not the guy who invented Minecraft, he, uh, back in 2012, tweeted that he was real unhappy with Windows 8. Remember Windows 8 when it came out? That he didn't want, um, that the, that the personal computer should remain basically accessible, not quite open source, but a platform that everybody could utilize. And that Windows 8 was screwing that up. Bebop Box is howling all over Twitter. He reposted that tweet from 2012 of Notch. Uh, she listed this hypocrisy that uh, not sure, uh, and it's all over the tech blogs I'm reading and stuff that not uh, had no respect for Microsoft and the way Microsoft was doing its business and making things exclusive rather than inclusive. Nobody ever expected Windows to be Linux. Nobody ever expected it to be open source, easily accessible, something that other people could work on. Nobody ever expected that. But Microsoft is so ex. Exclusive and un incompatible with other operating systems and difficult to use. Mo Yang and Microsoft declined in comments, quote, an acquisition would be a surprising turn for a closely held Mo Yang, whose 35 year old founder Marcus Pearson has shunned outside investment and is revered in the video game community for publicly rallying against big corporations, including two years ago, Microsoft. For Microsoft, Minecraft could reinvigorate the company's 13-year-old Xbox video, uh, video game business by giving it a cult hit with a legion of young fans. Mojang has sold more than 50 million copies of Minecraft since it was initially released in 2009 and earned more than 100 million in profits last year from the game and merchandise. Minecraft is already available on the Xbox as well as Sony Corp's PlayStation. It's got the specs and I'm not going to read it. PCs and smartphones. The game has struck a chord with children and hardcore gamers alike. It's grown beyond video games, uh, Scholastic Corp. I remind you of Minecraft EDU. Uh, it's uh, involved with Lego and Time Warner's pictures for an upcoming feature film. There's even a popular edition for schools to teach children subjects such as language and architecture. Why didn't they mention Minecraft EDU? Mo Yang would be the first multi-billion acquisition for Microsoft's chief, chief executive, whatever, since he was named top job in February. It would also be somewhat of an unexpected plunge for Mr. Whatever, who has signaled Xbox isn't a core business for Microsoft. Let me tell you something about the history of Xbox. I had kids coming to my house when I was living in the war zone of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Kids who were basically latchkey kids. Their parents were working two, three jobs trying to make ends meet, or they were sick, or they were addicted, or they were mentally ill. That's why these people were living in poverty. These kids all came over to my house. I was to heck with the adult neighbors. They're, what's the point? You know, the crack and the insanity and the beatings and the human feces on the street and the vomit and the broken beer bottles and the syringes. I had to clean syringes out of the garden. To heck with the adults. But the kids would come over to my house and we learned how to garden together and cook. The, you know, the junk they hand out at the um, 
at the food pantries, the crap they hand out that seems inedible. Well, I'm a good cook, and I taught them how to cook all kinds of stuff with that stuff so it doesn't taste awful. And they'd go home, and their parents would say, where'd you learn how to do that? And they'd say, they'd say my name. So the adults in the neighborhood, I didn't do this for this reason, but the adults in the neighborhood left me alone. They might have thought I was crazy, but they respected me because I was good to their kids. Well, kids were coming to my house, and they needed help with homework. I had moved from Louisville, Kentucky, where the only internet access back in those, it was dark days, dark old days. The only internet access back then was for upper middle class people, people working at colleges or for the military or something, or internet cafes. I knew how to use computers back then, not much, but I knew how to turn one on and I knew how to sort of kind of get it running. And I got out here and these kids are needing help with their homework. So we started making trips to the library downtown and it was 25 cents per kid to take the bus. And coming up with that much money for 8, 10, 20 kids was a real scramble. Plus, it was a pain in the nose to have to take all those kids on the bus and back and make sure everybody came back safe and healthy. And I didn't want to have to say no to a kid because they didn't have a quarter. Well, there's this chain store called Big Lots. They buy merchandise that's, uh, it's the end of the release, like they're not going to make any more of that item. And so they buy the warehouse out because the company's not going to sell that product anymore and they've come out with a better version or the, the company went out of business whatever but big lot buys these products and then they turn around and sell them at really deeply discounted prices and one day the ad came in the mail and there was this thing called a web tv it looked a little bit like a cable box a big cable box or like a vcr yeah more like a vcr player because they're big uh and what it was it was 200 bucks, and what it was, you could plug it into your TV, plug it into the outlet at your house, and plug it into your telephone jack, and you were on the internet, and your TV was the monitor. You didn't have to upload or download anything. It was all inside web TV servers. You didn't have to worry about, like, viruses and Trojans and all, malware and all that kind of stuff. It was for people who didn't know anything about using the internet. You could sit on your couch with a cordless keyboard in your hand, uh, no mouse required, and you could be on the internet with this thing. I called Web TV and I said, what do you think about this? Is this a good deal? Blah, blah, blah. Well, the dang thing was retailing for a lot more than, uh, had been retailing for a lot more than what I would pay for this one. And the model wasn't so old that it would be out of date and wouldn't be compliant with the web TV technology of the day. The woman said, I think you should go for it. It would cost $25 a month. So I went to Big Lots. I scrambled and I scraped and I grabbed money that I couldn't afford to spend. And I went to Big Lots and I bought this thing and I brought it home and I took it out of the box and I plugged it in like the picture said. And boom, I was on the internet. That was in 1998, I think. It was a wonderful appliance. We started doing things that were unheard of. The, the, the users of the box were doing unbelievable artwork and stuff, things that can only be seen on a web TV, people who had busted code from, you know, behind the scenes, people who even worked on web TV itself, developers and stuff. We developed art forms with that thing that should be in the Museum of Modern Art today. Beautiful stuff. You can't even see it on a PC. You have to have a web TV box in order to be able to see it. It doesn't translate into PC graphics. We did amazing things with it. We, I've still got a friend to this, two friends to this day on Facebook that we were on web TV together. I became a writer for a woman who ran a magazine, an, an e-magazine, uh, internet magazine, about web TV and how to use it and so on. She wanted to be a product consultant for web TV, a, a, you know, get user feedback on how the thing works and uh, feed that back to web TV. Web TV was started basically by two guys in a garage. Sound familiar? And they did a really good job with it and they were sticking with it and then here came Microsoft. And Microsoft said, I don't even remember how many billions of dollars they offered them for web TV. I don't remember look it up on the internet. They sold web TV to Microsoft. There went the upgrades and the upgrades that came out were so buggy that the machine didn't work properly. There went customer service. You couldn't get any customer service. There went connectivity. There went speed. The thing was full of bugs. Normal functions that were habitual that everybody knew how to do all of a sudden didn't work. 
there was all kinds of crackdowns on things like the way emails were sent. We could no longer put HTML signatures in our emails. They were afraid of code cracking. All kinds of stuff started happening. And they never would, it was on a 28K modem. They never would upgrade it so that it would be higher speed. By now people were getting DSL and stuck and we weren't keeping up. At least a 56K modem, come on, man. We couldn't watch uh, YouTube videos. We couldn't play even some very simple flash games. This woman that started the consultation business, she, she did a thing called Games for TV. It was all games for the um, web TV box. Then Microsoft put out a new box. It cost a lot more money and oh boy, this is gonna be such a great box and it's gonna do this and that and the other. What it really did was it clamped down and we had much less functionality in the web TV box than we had had before. Is Microsoft TV no good? And then they dropped support for it all together. They said, you better get a PC because we're done with this. Now, why did Microsoft buy web TV? They didn't want web TV. They wanted the hardware. They wanted the box. Guess where that box is now? That box is the Xbox. One of the best communications devices ever made for working class people, for low income people, to be able to be on the internet anywhere, anytime, is dead. And instead, here is the Xbox. And why does Microsoft want to acquire Mojang for the Xbox? Do you think Minecraft is going to look anything? This all occurred in the span of, the thing with Web TV all occurred in the span of like three, five years, that's it. Do you think you're going to recognize, be able to play, or have any functionality with Minecraft within the next three to five years? Do you think any low-income kids are going to be able to learn how to do architecture, uh, animal husbandry, geology, biology, counting, basic remedial computer skills. Do you think that's going to happen now that Microsoft owns Mojang? You know, I put out that video, sprucing up and cracking down. Is Minecraft for sale? I suspected Disney. Oh no, it's worse than that. It's Microsoft. Zuma just tweeted, if Microsoft buys Mojang, I'm going to cry. Everybody's angry and hurt. Not said he'd never, ever, ever be in bed with a large corporation like that. I have no clue what Notch could possibly do with $2 billion. You know that block by block series where little kids in Haiti and India and, oh, I'm so angry, and Africa were, so people were making little maps of the areas they lived in, of the, of the places where there were community gathering places, you know, uh, mass transit, parks, uh, real parks, places where people came to collect water. They were making maps of those and translating them into Minecraft blocks. They were teaching kids to use Minecraft to design the architecture for those public spaces. Really poor kids were learning the fundamentals of computer technology to improve their communities. Do you think Microsoft's going to do that? You know, people were worried about bucket and servers and all that. That's over. If Microsoft really owns Mojang, Microsoft will own the servers. Microsoft will own the plugins. They will control it all. There will be no open source. There will be no creativity. They will control it all. They will tell Yeb and Dinnerbone and Marcus M Notch and Vu, I think his name is the CEO, they'll tell those people what to do and when to do it and how fast it needs to be done. There will be no more creativity in, my, in Minecraft. That's over. If Microsoft owns Mojang, it's over. All these Let's Players on YouTube, I really don't think that Microsoft is going to be cool with letting people broadcast Minecraft Let's Plays. I think it's over. And I think I was right that the convention was delayed until spring because that's when they're going to make the big announcement. Thanks, Notch. I really thought you had some vision, son. I really thought you could see that this is a game beyond gender, beyond race, beyond sexual orientation. You speak of those things in your own blog. I thought you really understood the importance of Minecraft EDU, putting Minecraft in, in, in elementary schools and colleges all over the planet. I thought you understood the importance of block by block. I thought you understood the importance of teaching kids quantum computing, and that's why you had a partnership with Google to create QCraft. 
I thought you understood, you know, in that movie Minecraft, The Making of Mojang, somebody said, you know, people are saying the impact this game is going to have on kids in 10, 15 years. And you said, then we'd better do it right. This is not right. This is horrible. You just turned a beautiful gourmet meal into a freaking Big Mac, poisoning people with crap. That's what you've done. You took something beautiful and you turned it into junk food. If Microsoft has bought Mojang, it's all over. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, dislike, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Get it out there. People need to know. Thank you. Bye.